and, and a lot of people aren't willing to come back down to the ground level and and accept that and take orders and 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 be kind of that little bit of a peon to yeah. to regain their I guess their their position within the tribe and stuff and to, to you're not going to come back and just have status the status on the outside world doesn't matter to inside the reservation well, I, even, I think even in the outside world like, I, there's PhDs that work for me and, you know they still have to they still have to earn the respect of those that are within the company that have more mm -hmm. experience because well, yeah. you know the the education doesn't translate to, to the experience, experience. Yeah. but um, you know I think it I think it's really interesting though some of the greatest attorneys have are Native American attorneys I mean they, if you look just in the really recent like history <laughs> yeah if you, you look at recent history the the best attorneys out there are just are, are probably Native Americans mm -hmm. because look at the huge victories that they've had um, you know when fighting and combating the US government themselves you know the, the the law is going against them because it's the US government but yet they find a way to, to make the law work for them uh, even though there's those that are trying to change it yeah. while they're, they're going through it but uh, I think if you can, you can almost that, try it's just where the focus is because there's a huge amount of respect for you know, I went to a conference recently where uh, it was probably six months ago, actually, um, where it was a Native American conference, and they were praising uh, praising the fact that they had put so much effort into to educating lawyers and the next generation by having law be the emphasis. But now they they're like, but on the other hand, you know, whether it's healthcare or other things, to see to the needs of the people. You know there isn't that same focus, and they were talking about the STEM programs and how do we yeah. how do we engage our future generation in these other these other areas. And I, I think it'll come around, but um, what's well, so funny? I understand the not wanting to to lose the the things that are core to yeah. I'd say we're ranked second behind Jews. Oh, well, for the, for law. Well, they they. I'd say that only because this. It's not just money. I'd say that because most languages are in 85% are in Latin, the other 15% are in Greek. Hebrew and Arabic are the original languages. Well, or at least they say that shit. But I used to I used to date uh, two American Jewish Ashkenazi uh, girls, and then I dated an Israeli. Her name was Adi, A D I. The actual words means something in Hebrew. There's no prefix, no suffix. Like whenever back in English, yeah. you know what I mean? Like in our in our mm -hmm. deals they used to well this is a prefix, this is a suffix, and this is what the root word is and this is what it means. Broken down. So when people like women in a matriarch society, when they name their kids, what does that mean? So her name is Adi, which means beautiful jewel or ornament. Mm -hmm. Just like like not for instance like take for instance, you have a logo, just yeah. like you just got done telling me for this. Like not for nothing. Israel picked the Star of David for yeah. their flag, which is a lot like a business card. Yeah. Now, since we're fucking assimilated and we probably know that that Bible, because we're very spiritual people, we were forced to learn that shit. So David was supposed to build God's first temple. You know, he slept with Bathsheba, sent her husband to the fucking front lines, they mashed his shit out. And the gist of it is, is that whenever he finally got to Israel, God said, you know, uh, you're, a, you're a warmonger. You got too much blood on your hands. David's son is Solomon, yeah. which wrote 75% of, uh, what is it, Proverbs. Proverbs is uh, wisdom. It's a yeah. book about wisdom. Or Hebrew, they say Mishle. Yeah. Anyway, the Hebrew version of Solomon's name is Shlomo, which means fucking peace. If it were me, if I had a fucking, if I had a flag, I would have had a, because Shlomo was a darker dude, and I would have had a peace sign with some dude of 1970s, 1960s, Afro out to here with a peace sign, but you and I both know that the defense contracting budget moved from $550 billion to $700 billion, and that's our biggest fucking moneymaker, though. We're the biggest bullies on planet fucking Earth. 
except for we're technically a sovereign nation, and we actually rank number one in uh, military <coughs> out of any any people. Though yeah. it was never us against anybody else. But anyhow, yeah. all I'm trying to say is that from the original thing is that when it comes to argument, yeah. I had a, a native attorney, and he told me, he said, law. He said, when it really comes down to it, he goes, if you have favors, <laughs> you practice the fucking law don't mean shit. Yeah. And my uncle, on Crow Reservation, both on and off the reservation, his name is Leroy Matafay, he's a judge in two different jurisdictions, both in the White Place, which is uh, Bighorn County, and on Crow Reservation. He also created University of Oklahoma's Indian Law Program, yeah. which is kind of why I want to get a law degree, but I also know this. If you have favors, favors mean totally a lot more. It's why, like, we get fucked over a lot. Like, they know that it's not right to fucking steal a copper mine, which is what they went down to San Carlos and they stole that shit. They know that whenever pre the, uh, the Treaty of 1851, they're on Standing Rock. We had, you know, in the borders, no, it really wasn't on a reservation. They put that shit a mile off. And they, then they had to go back and say, per the Treaty of 1851, yeah, technically it is on Indian land. And the original, the pipeline was supposed to go through Bismarck, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. So there's always loopholes. It's the same shit whenever you watch women buy fucking stilettos in the, in the <laughs> fashion industry. Most of that shit is made in India, Pakistan, or some Asian country, though. But... Mm -hmm. They either leave off the stiletto that's called a stopper at the bottom, or they leave off the, the buckle. They put that shit in a box, they move it to Milan or Paris, France, or Paris, as we say in English. They either move it there, and then they assemble it. So the rule is, is 60% is assembled in that country. They can say, made in Milan, or they can, made in Paris. And the thing is, is this, is that because they look after their workers for minimum wage, and they don't give them fucking slave labor and throw them crumbs under the goddamn door, the truth is, and once you know finance, once you do know marketing and law and stuff like that, you start to realize what is real power. And it sure as shit ain't the presidency. I mean, whenever you look at the, the Federal, or what, not the Federal Reserve, but the IMF, it's got 189 countries in its fucking membership. You know what I mean? That, that's real power, and Jews control that shit, which is why they want to fucking control, like, North Korea. You know what I mean? And they're pretty good. You know, Jewish people are pretty good. I mean... They got Christians that, that fight their wars for them. They do. We, we don't got no fucking problems with no Arabs. Yeah. Let them have their own, like, natural resources. But the thing of it is, is this, is that once you take people's heroes from them mm -hmm. and you start issuing them Middle Eastern heroes, then that's where the problem is. That's why they had a guy up in San Francisco. He was a Latino, um, he was a Latino uh, preacher. And he was talking about in Orlando, whenever a guy went in there and shot up a gay club, and he said, honestly, I'm kind of sad that he didn't finish the job. And it's like, where the fuck are you coming from, man? Like, that's where you, it's kind of like it would be like being in your penthouse here, though, and then you take out all the lights. and You know your way around here, but we're here in your penthouse, and we're like, and then finally we come up on some fireflies because we meet other indigenous people, and they're like, well, why? Why did you do this? They always go back to the, the person who fucking took their fireflies and smashed them out and said, I'll tell you later. And then they still keep playing the same fucking game. Yeah. You know? But that's what I always enjoy about culture as, it, as it's, you know, it's getting back down now. But, yeah. Yeah. Interesting conversations. <laughs> nah, it's just, you always get a different, you get a different spiel from, from, from natives, though. That's... I enjoy the legal side of it. I enjoy the legal side? And, uh, <laughs> but I remember when I was in law school, and uh, the reason why I didn't finish, oh, I finished law school, but I never chose to, to be, a, be a practicing an attorney because I saw, like, the pathway to be a really powerful attorney was I had to work as a junior associate and then work my way up to become partner. And at the same time, I looked at um, Supreme Court rulings against tribes. So each tribe that, that 
won a case wasn't really necessarily a win. It was more like the retention of the status quo. But over time, there was a further diminishment of tribal sovereignty. So I was like, fuck. Um, like a lot of, uh, like justice is, isn't truly blind. And um, it, it takes a lot of money to hire some good attorneys and law firms. But when I, when I was like looking at, well, if tribal sovereignty fully gets eroded or diminished or abrogated, and the only thing that's going to stay within the tribal community is going to be a tribal economy or no economy at all. So, like, for me, it's like what was a little bit part of my life growing up was, like, to me, it's about it's about the economics. Yeah. And um, one thing that I try to, like, share and, and advise tribal leadership is to say, and this is just only one definition of it, which is <coughs> until we own all of our assets and generate all the cash flow from the assets to become fully self-sufficient then we still have not really become so, sovereign. sovereign yeah and for me that's like that's that's what drives me to work with a lot of different tribes and um try to help them get to that next level and hopefully one day you know, tribe, multiple tribes can truly be, truly sovereign through being self-sufficient. Yeah. So it's like for me, like lawyers, like I find lawyers complicate business transactions yeah. for one, and um, two, it's like um, you know, uh, to to really get some really um, heavy hitters from the lawyer side who are well connected. It all, it all comes back to wealth, Yeah. you know, so. Well, it kind of comes back to the thing that we were saying earlier, it's more being, lawyers is more reactive versus economic right. development right. and growth is you right. proactive. Yeah. Let's be proactive about this stuff so that way we have time to deal with it when it does come versus, well, now we need the lawyers because this already happened. Somebody explained it to me in a business manner. He said, how does this man hunt? Not his fucking job title. But how does this man eat? They said, what does a lawyer do? They bill hours. See, how does this man shoot his arrows? You know? That's why I say impatience, though. Because for most people in employment, they hunt rats. Kind of like a, a vampire when they go to hunt. They're so used to killing small games that they're always slaughtering. A little small game. And it's not nutritious food, though, but for us natives, they always say that we were patient enough to hunt buffalo because there was always this arm and this arm that we had meat over so we could mend fences, you know, if we had made someone mad, and then we could make new relationships with this. We were always giving. There was a lot of, you know, a lot of meat to give in that buffalo, but a chance when you're talking about those lawyers, though, how does this man hunt? How does he make his, you know... How does he eat? How does he shoot his arrows? Yeah. I know where I come from. Fuckers. It's so frustrating. Uh, you know, stinking. I, I get PPT it, because it's like you're, you know, you're billing me for hours, but what are the results you're generating? You're, you're just, right. You're giving me vague answers. You're, you're billing more hours. Those fuckers, man. Like, and you, and I, I will pay you for results. I'm gonna, you know, I, I, I tell like now when I meet with attorneys, I'm like, I'm not gonna pay you for your clients. Like, I'm, 